Um, I know that uh, you, you're also calling for gender equality in land distribution. What is the organization all about? Well, uh, we, you know, in May last month, we took, we walked, you know, along the streets in Bloemfontein where women like Charlotte McLeague had walked in protest against uh, this uh, uh, terrible act. And the organization issued a memorandum. We gave it to the Minister of Land Reform and we're saying this is the time now that we take the struggle forward mm -hmm. by ensuring that women in particular equally benefit from this economy. Yeah. Why women in particular when it comes to land? I mean, they're part of a family unit, but why are we singling out women? I think it's important to understand what this, uh, this special planning did to women in particular. Most of them, that's about the only, only area of competence that they have. They, they live on, on the fields, they feed their children with the, what they produce from the fields, and they live, the majority of our women live in rural areas. Mm -hmm. And so it, it also, women have been excluded in the economy. It's about the only asset they could have if, if they own a piece of land, which could assist them whether to continue in this sector or to use it as a collateral to be included in the economy. Yeah, it's, it's amazing when, when we look at your profile. I mean, obviously, economic development, you are the deputy minister of that. You're not necessarily in land reform. That's not the yeah. department that you're in. But let, let's talk about land reform and that department, because obviously you work quite closely together. Are there programs in place to assist women, to, 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 to give them this, this land that you're talking about? Well, I was actually surprised. After that uh, much, I look carefully at what uh, the department has been doing. The minister had just taken an extra mile in term terms of a breakdown of uh, people who have been included instead of in, in terms of uh, farm ownership. And he gives a percentage that has gone to women, that uh, has gone to people with disabilities with the billions that he had. So I thought the department is really working hard to ensure that people, no, no, it's not only a question of owning land, mm. but also assistance in terms of acquiring the necessary expertise yeah. in terms of the what to do uh, once they've got yeah. they've owned it. Well, that, that, was, that was my next question to you. I mean, we talk about skills because it's one thing owning the lands, but it's another thing using that land productively and having the skills to ensure that it becomes uh, economically beneficial for the individual owning it. Now, how do we go about doing that? You know, our department uh, signed a landmark youth accord, as they are saying, where quite a number of social partners, starting with the young people themselves, came forward and said, economy is our priority. And of course, immediately the question of skills came to the fore. In this sector in particular, we, 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 you know, we've seen, you know, like over the weekend, I was in a very remote rural area um, in Nkandla. I was surprised to see the number of young people who came around just when they heard that I'm in the area, mm. uh, in a center, Gwajogweni center, uh, where they, they go for these social grants. And they were really committed and showing me around where they are learning to plant some cabbages and so on. So I think it's very, very important to make use of this sector, in a, a, including people who have been excluded in the economy, in creating jobs, and also fighting poverty. Yeah. You know, food security is a big issue. Massive. Yeah. yeah. That is a big thing. Let's, let's take our mind back to 1956, when Charlotte McTeke and 20,000 other women gathered to march against this, uh, this, this 1913 Act of Land Redistribution. Um, you know, that was a united force. It was a united front. What do the women of today have to do to be heard? You know, the women, well, of course, starting with us, what are we doing with such a rich legacy of women who stood up as far back as 1913 yeah. against this act and also 1956 against the Dompas? You know, with us is to really ensure that we put our government under pressure and other social partners. Because when it comes to agribusiness, for instance, if farmers are laid back or they are turning a blind eye, even if the minister has assisted women to secure land, 
then they are not going to enter the value chain. Yeah. The training will be limited and short term. Then it means their inclusion won't be sustainable. So all the social partners, we have to agitate. We have to escalate. Mm. It can no longer be only about inclusion. It's about sustainability and ensuring that women enter the value chain through partners, people who are already the established farmers yeah. in this sector in yeah. particular. All right. We've run out of time, Minister, but I know that you, you handed over a memorandum uh, to the Minister of Land Reform and Rural Development. What, what was that all about very quickly? Really, it's all about saying, Minister, the billions you have put aside and your commitment escalate. Okay. More women, not the percentages we see. Good. More pressure. More pressure. Uh, and this is a good start. I mean, exactly. being, being here as well, talking about it, making people aware. Thank you so much for being with us here this morning. Professor Kingue Mkise, who is the uh, Deputy Minister for Economic Development uh, and also the National Convener of the Progressive Women's Movement of South Africa, talking about land reform when it comes to women. Thank you for being our guest.